Good afternoon, Vandal fans, and welcome to another edition of Fourth and Downtown. I'm your host, Josh Grissom, and I'm joined alongside by Luis, the Godfather Torres, this Friday afternoon. How you doing, Luis? Pretty good. It's been one hectic, quote-unquote, flu season or cold season as we're getting through. Very true. It's going around the office, but today we are here on air to talk to you about some of the recent basketball results, both the men's and the women's team faced off against Northern Colorado last night. A couple of very close matchups and some surprising results as far as that goes. We will talk about that as well as kind of discuss the latest information from the Big Sky Conference. Uh, the commissioner, Doug Fullerton, said he's going to retire. A little bit of the impact as far as that goes. And then we'll probably discuss a little bit about the Sunbelt Conference and the presentation that the University of Idaho will be making to officials this next Monday from Boise. So. Let's start our program off with the men's basketball results. They took on Northern Colorado last night. Kind of a surprising game. Uh, fans were very shocked to see Perion Calendret on the court, dressed in uniform, going through warm-ups with his team. Originally on Tuesday, Coach Don Verlin said that Perion Calendret would be out for at least another week or two with his injury, but made no mention of suiting Calendret up. Uh, the junior guard did not play in the game, but just the fact that he's on the court participating through warm-ups is certainly good news for the Vandals. The team had a surprisingly strong offensive production from Jake Strawn, uh, I believe 23 points on just six, no, seven shot attempts, six of seven from the field, six of seven from three-point range, and five of six with free throws in just 15 minutes on the court. He led the Vandals to a 73-67 to win over Northern Colorado and improves Idaho's record overall to 15-10 and 7-5 10 and and in the Big Sky Conference. I believe the team is now still 500 without uh, both Perion Calendret and Victor Sanders. I think they're like 3-3 three and three now? Yes. With, without them? So, kind of a good strong showing from the reserve players being able to hold down the fort for right now without those two leading scorers. Uh, another interesting tidbit from the game, Sanders was also shooting around without his cast. Uh, not necessarily fully healthy yet, but it seems to be that he's improving, and it sounded like Don Verlin was very optimistic in the Tuesday press conference when discussing the status of the sophomore and the team's leading scorer. But just to kind of go through some of the Vandals who stepped up for uh, – Idaho, we had 14 points from Chris Sarbaugh, kind of a 12 of 13 on free throws, so uh, not necessarily finding shots on the court, but getting fouled and getting to the line and then converting with a really high free throw percentage. Uh, we also had 10 points from Chad Sherwood on 2 of 6 from 3 point range, 4 of 4 from the free throw line, 9 points from Junior Ty Egbert, uh, 3 of 6 from the field, 3 of 4 from the free throw line in 25 minutes of play. Uh, kind of a something that the Vandal fans have been disappointed in was Arkady Merkutchen, only 4 points, uh, 6 minutes on the court, uh, really struggling as of late. But the Vandals came away with the victory last night, Luis, and that's kind of what matters. Yes, it really matters. It's, it's one of those things that right now that Idaho, it seems like one one game they do really, really well offensively. The next game, they just fall short by two points. It seems like that's been the trend of the season. But Jake Strong, from, I would say this, from out of nowhere, from out of nowhere, really had a, probably the game of his career this far. And I think you need, like I mentioned in one of my stat, in my stat predictions, again, tomorrow's game against North Dakota is that a guy like Ty Egbert needs to step up. But besides Egbert, you gotta need, you're going to need a couple more guys to really help the team. And I think in this game alone, I think several guys came into play, whether, like, you mentioned about Sarba on the free throw or or Sherwood, who's been sorely consistent over the last couple of games, Chad Sherwood, and also don't forget Nate Sherwood. Both of them have been quietly consistent, but they've been doing pretty good. And just, it shows you right now that they're going to still fight. And with the optimism that they have with Verlin in the conference, as you mentioned, I think that's a step in the right direction. True. Chad Sherwood has been pretty consistent in the absence of Calendra and Sanders. But what I find interesting for the team is that the reserve players, there hasn't been anybody else who's been really consistent, but almost all of them, one of them always seems to have 
sort of a standout game, like Jake Strong last night, Ty Egbert the other night. Uh, just somebody's always stepping up for the Vandals in place of Sanders and Calendret, and I think that's very good right now. Idaho is fifth in conference standings. They are a half game out of the number four position, which would earn them a first round buy. Really good news for the Vandals to be still be fighting for a spot like this this late in the season without their two leading scorers uh, for the last like month of play. Yeah, it's been it's been it's been amazing that they they're still right up there. I think it really helps that they fight week game in and game out, no matter the result. And they just been they just. It's one of those things that a couple of things could have gotten a little a bit better, but for this game, it seems like, for the most part, they kind of had a they had a trail, they had to turn things around, but they finally were able to turn it around and in, in, in favor of Idaho because usually, when they're in the lead and they're in control, they usually just stay there. When they're like hit or miss, and they may be a hard time, and hopefully, going into Saturday, this will really mean a good sign. But once those two leading guards come back. I would watch out whoever Idaho faces. Correction, this is Idaho's ninth game without Perion Calendret, and the Vandals are 5-4 and four in those games. I think the 3-3 three and three yeah. record is without Sanders. I think that's what you you mentioned earlier, the 3-3 three three without both Sanders and Calendret. Yes, but very good news from the Vandals team. Just a half game behind Idaho State with a 7-4 and four record. They play Idaho State in the final game of the year, so if the standings are to hold up, and be consistent to that point, that might decide who gets that extra buy. And I think that would be very pivotal for Don Berlin and the Vandals. But as of right now, the team is 7-5 and five in conference play. Idaho State is ahead of them in the fourth position with 7-4 and four record. Eastern Washington is third with an 8-4 and four record. So right there, half game behind Idaho State, full game behind Eastern Washington. Could be very easy for the Vandals to be able to take one of those spots if they can find a way to grind out some wins in the next couple weeks. Weaver State is second overall with a 9-2 and record in conference play, and Montana has the number one spot with a 10-2 and record against conference opponents. And as if I remember, I mentioned, we mentioned a couple weeks ago, Weaver State were on that hot win streak of mine, so considering that, that's probably a little bit of good news for Idaho, so they kind of, can kind of go in whenever, when they face, the, face them, they don't have to really worry about this long win streak. Eastern Washington looks like the dangerous team right now. They have a five-game win streak in conference play, going from three and four to eight and four. Huge turnaround for the Eagles. You almost wonder if they'll be able to keep that momentum up in the next couple weeks, but you know, we'll see. It's yeah. the Big Sky Conference. You know, Northern Arizona beat us earlier this week, and that was just their second conference win. So anything can happen, essentially yeah. in play. And it kind of goes back to what Verlin said or last month at one of the conferences, like. You look at the con you look at the record and yes, they might be a two and ten team or whatever or whatever, but they're still gonna be competitive and they may prove they may prove something different what is what the records have not shown and Northern Arizona was one of those prime examples that even though they're in the bottom team, they they could still probably be competitive. I think any team can be competitive in the Big Sky Conference. That's what makes it unique for the most part. So Idaho will be back at home tomorrow night. They will take on North Dakota at 7 p.m. We will have reporters covering the game. And be sure to check out www.thevandalnation.com for the latest updates. And follow our Twitter, at Vandal Nation, for scoring updates and highlights from the game, including video tidbits and uh, snippets from the press conference. So now we move on to the women's side. And... A lot of us were very surprised by the outcome of the game yesterday. Yeah, not just the not just the outcome is what almost looked like it'd be probably the lowest scoring game of the season for Idaho. It seems like defense once again told the story for like the first three and a half quarters, and then like the final three minutes of the fourth quarter. That's when the shooting game really happened. Idaho is just I think what happened with the women's team in my in my honest opinion is they like Savannah Scott pretty much light the fire. It seems like when Idaho are on fire, Savannah Scott will usually be the one that lights it out with a three, and she was a huge detriment for the for the Vandals at the very end. But so so yeah. the Vandals came away uh, with a seventy to sixty eight loss to the Bears. Uh, just at one point, 
with 4.42 left in the fourth quarter. They were down by 12 points. They really kind of struggled to find a rhythm, but I guess that little streak right there at the end was enough to keep them in the game and force overtime. But it just seemed like a very off night for the team. They had just difficulty. I don't know. The thing of it is, when I looked at the stats, it seems like the numbers that Idaho had looked like they could probably win. They committed less turnovers. At one point, both of them had 10 going into the halftime, but it was a, it was mostly like a mess for the first three and a half quarters. Like I mentioned, it was mostly a mess. So like, who who will commit less turnovers? Who will have the ball the longest? I think what the main difference was the three point game and the shooting on the field that Idaho were down, I believe, one in both categories. I think that made the difference was just that one extra successful conversion that really did a man for Idaho. But they still really came back with like Taylor Pierce and Christina Salvatore at the very end really got it going and got a, a lead, pretty much really helped the Vandals go into overtime. What looked like it was going to be a convincing Northern Colorado victory. But they, they, they like like I said, and I think it comes back to what Allie Ford said last Saturday in the, conf- in the press conference after they after their winning game after they won last week, last Saturday. It comes down to like they have to pretty much hustle and play all 40 minutes. And you may say that you must play all 40 minutes that Idaho may have played almost all 40 minutes, but somewhere in the er- somewhere at the start of the fourth quarter they were not kind of playing the all 40 minute rule that they were that four was implied. So and they did the best they could, but it just was a rough night as a whole for Idaho. And that fourth quarter almost could have been probably a bad ending. Taylor Pierce finished with 16 points for the Vandals. Christina Salvatore with 12. Michaela Ferenz with 13. Another good game from her. Geraldine McCorkle had 11. Kind of spread out offensively. But like you said, shooting. Idaho finished the game uh, with 40.7% shooting from the field. 38.9% from three-point range and free throw, 68.4%. On the other side, Northern Colorado finished the game shooting 48% from the field, 47.4% from three-point range, and 87.5% from the three-throw line. Free throws, again, proved to be a huge factor. Uh, Vandals were only able to score seven points in overtime to fall in the two-point loss, 70-68. to on the road, and we're going to check the conference standings right now because yeah. I know that has some definite oh, that implications. Has to do. And another thing is, like, when that foul happened at the last second, that was kind of good news and bad news for Idaho. Good news, they were able to close it, but bad news is that one extra point they were not able to get because of free throws. There's only two, they didn't make the basket, so that really hurt them. And uh, you may wonder. wonder had that foul may have not happened, it might have been a different story. It's one of those things that. They really did not need the foul with the little amount of seconds left because essentially if you were for two. Now, if it was three, then it would have been a probably a much different story, but they were going to have a hard time catching up. It's just one of those unfortunate nights that may pay dividends for Idaho down the stretch. Hope, hopefully that's not the case, but it's a reminder that they got to get go. They really got to get going here at the very end. And yes, last night was definitely one of those nights that they do not want to have down the stretch. So, huge standings implications from last night's not loss. Eastern Washington dropped a game. So if the Vandals had won, they would have had the opportunity to potentially be vying for that number two spot. Instead, they lost as well, which drops them to 9-3 and three in conference play, 17-7 and seven overall. They're a game behind Eastern Washington, who is 10-12 and 12 in conference play, and two games behind conference leader Montana State with an 11-1 and one record against conference opponents six games left on the schedule I can see them leapfrogging Eastern Washington because they do meet Eastern Washington in Cheney for another game uh, near the end of the year and their next couple games are against some middling of the pack programs and then they play Portland State which is near the bottom of the conference rankings with a 1-10 in conference record so I think it's very easy for the Vandals to rebound over the next couple of games. I think the true test of their caliber will be at Washington State, sorry, Eastern Washington, to see how they match up against conference opponents and an elite conference opponent. And it might preview, you know, a huge like semifinal or perhaps the final of the Big Sky Conference tournament. But 
Yeah, right now they are a game behind Eastern Washington. They're in third, so they are still in position to take a first round bye. But you always want to be as high, highly ranked as possible. Yeah, you want to be closer to Montana State. And like say, how they won, it would have been right up there. Now they gotta have to hope for more, more damage as far as Montana State to occur, so they can have a chance for that number one spot. They're doing pretty good, but I would imagine they want to be that number one spot. So they could go into the post, go into Reno, being like one of the premio contenders, like I mentioned throughout this season. They could be premio contenders. Last night, they showed some of it, but they still need to show more to be legitimately a prime contender. Last night, that's one of those kind of games they really need to brush off and not have again. So as a result of the loss, the Vandals are now third in conference standings. They will face North Dakota on Saturday on the road. Now we shift our attention to some pretty big news as far as the Big Center Conference is concerned. Uh, Commissioner Doug Fullerton announced his retirement effective Jan sorry, June 30th of this year. Uh, he's kind of, he's oversaw the Vandals in all of the sports except for football. And what's interesting is he has campaigns, or not campaigns, he has always invited and had an open invitation for the Vandals to join the Big Sky Conference as a football-only member. The fact that he is retiring in June is very interesting as far as the football status is concerned. If Idaho does not receive a contract extension from the Sun Belt Conference, what happens? You know, the Vandals have discussed going independent, but they said the idea is not very attractive. The other said the, they said the other option was to join the Big Sky Conference, but if Doug Fullerton is retiring, does that change anything for the new commissioner who is going to be coming in? That will probably that would have to be the case. Depends who who will be the new commissioner and whether or not they still he sees eye to eye on Fullerton as far as inviting Idaho back to the Big Sky Conference, not back to the Big Sky Conference, to go to the Big Sky Conference. Because if they if they don't, then this could be a bigger, a big, major implication as far as what will happen if Idaho don't get that agreement with the Sun Belt, Belt by coming up like less than a month from now. It's coming closer than we we imagine. And once that day arrives, that will be huge news, whatever. And it's like everybody has a very different opinions of this whole those whole situations. Some people want them to stay, some want to go to Big Sky. Some want to renew rivalries because if they, if they were to go back to Big Sky like Montana. Some would like to see them independent just to see play different teams, but at the same time, what's best for Idaho? What's best for the football program down the road? They had, they wa they had several wins. They had four wins last season compared to one to two combined wins in the, in the previous two years. And it's like they really need some good news out of this, and, Mar and when that day arrives, when the, when the decision is made, this we're gonna have to keep an eye on the whole Big Sky story if the Sun Belt deal does not work out. True. So, University of Idaho President Chuck Staven will be giving a presentation to the Sun Belt Conference on Monday, remotely from Boise. Uh, Sean Kramer of the Spokesman Review says that. University of Idaho Athletic Director Rob Spear will be here on campus when that occurs. Apparently, all of the other presidents in the big in the Sun Belt Conference will be joining via conference call for the presentation. Uh, interesting scenario. They cannot all meet until the Sun Belt Conference basketball tournament next in in March, March 10th. So mark your calendars because that is the date where we will find out where the direction of Idaho football goes and. Until that day, we can only speculate. But, uh, like like you said, there's a lot of options, and people are going to be upset regardless of no, what what happens. Way, they will be upset. It's just a matter of which ones will be the least the the least negative for the people. The one that is more optimistic than I real I really don't know. You can see uh, there's several arguments can be made like the benefits of those three options but there's also several cons and this retirement could have probably not come at a worse time in case we don't get the Sun Belt. If we get the Sun Belt then this probably will not matter all too much going forward but right now imagining if we don't get the Sun Belt deal this comes at a worse time. 
in my book. True. So not only does the vote have an impact, the retirement of Doug Fullerton might also impact the future of Vandal football. Uh, he served 20 years in the Big Sky Conference, uh, kind of overseeing everything. So uh, we wish Doug Fullerton the best with his retirement. And we will be very, very interested to see how this all plays out for everyone involved, especially for the Idaho football team. But now, with our final minutes, Luis, uh, we will play another quick game. This one, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, right. I will tell you something that we're, today we're going to talk about in the absence of the NFL the first week, it, like 210 days or something until the NFL season. Uh, you know, what, what are we going to do with our weekends until then? So oh, I know what I'm doing for my weekend. I won't mention it right now, but go ahead. Uh, here yeah. are a couple all tournaments, all bleh, alternatives this weekend as far as that goes. All right, so Luis, you will right. tell me thumbs up or thumbs down, and then a quick couple of sentences why you feel that way. So first off, coming to a theater near you, Deadpool. <sighs> transportation so sums down that's the reason transportation concerns and i think i need more to be convinced to watch the movie maybe my brother can convince me someday i am very interested in this i give it thumbs up and i will withhold a final rating until i actually see it but this is the first marvel movie that has an r rating and is geared towards grown-ups um from what i've heard it did an excellent job in portraying what people said the comic version of Deadpool was. And I think Ryan Reynolds was an excellent choice for the character. And as of right now on Rotten Tomatoes, it is certified fresh with 84% and on Flickster, a user score of 96%. Those are some very tough numbers to get. So I'm gonna give that a thumbs up. All right, Luis, for our second thing, Coming this spring, All right. Major League Football. Major League Football? Major League Football is a league developed <laughs> as kind of a bridge between college and NFL players for players coming out of college who are not necessarily talented enough to play in the NFL. It's hoping it would take the place as kind of like a recruiting stage and uh, who's cover who's covering this game i'm just hearing about this this, this, this reminds me of the lfl what it, who's covering this is this gonna be on tv apparently yes uh they have some television deals there's apparently going to be eight teams this spring uh one of them is i believe in orlando they are talking about they haven't announced the finalists yet but they did just have their first draft the other day a couple notable people involved with the organization Mark Bolger a 10-year NFL quarterback is going to be the quarterback advisory team and then Herm Edwards joined uh, I want to say he's like a senior advisor or something for him but uh, very interesting situation I'm gonna go with I'm, if, I'm gonna go with uh, it's football is a different way to watch football I'm not really gonna give a I'm not gonna give a rating until I see the quality of the game because there's been like leagues since the U once the when the USFL folded in in the late 80s around 86 87 there's been several leagues that came come and go NFL Europe the failed XFL the U, the UF the UFL it's like will this one live up to the hype hopefully major league lives up because usually when there's the name major league it should it should live up to the hype look at soccer look at baseball i say uh, for now give it up some stuff i'll be conservative about it we'll see what happens i'm interested in this i think they, they said their mission was to be as competitive as some of the best college football games available uh and they have that pool i think I've call, I've kind of always wondered if there could be a like a minor league for football and I think this could be the situation but I hope they learn from their predecessors it's difficult to kind of I don't know to establish football with the dominating presence of the NFL but it'll be very interesting to see 
And from an investor standpoint, I'm also kind of interested. They're uh, selling, it's a publicly owned and traded uh, company on the stock market. And right now, shares are just 57 cents. There's 43 million roughly shares available. And for 43 cents, uh, sorry, right now 57 cents is what the stock market says right now. Uh, I don't know, that might be a interesting gamble if you are that type of person maybe putting in a hundred bucks and then if it suddenly skyrockets you know that's a good little pickup you have but uh, I'll give it thumbs up um, I'm always interested to see other football organizations try and make their presence known I'm not exactly the hugest fan of the NFL itself the organization as a whole I love the Seahawks I love professional football I just after Roger Goodell and just everything that's going on, yeah, it's just the structure. That's how I feel with with. That's how I feel with racing sometimes. It's like with NASCAR. Obviously, the one I said, I, I know what I'll be watching during my fifth NASCAR. I'll open a bit. It, it's some the, some of the decisions I made are reasonable. Some of them I just don't. There's one or two things I don't like. It's just some, that's how it is in my book. But the NFL. They're, they got a lot of cleaning up to do as far as their organization, like with the whole Greg Hardy and LaShawn McCoy story, and, and which we don't have time to go into detail. No, but I think this is a very good opportunity, and especially for some of our Vandal graduates who may not necessarily have the, the, the talent initially to play in the NFL. I think this could be a good development league. And who, do you, who do you think will be a, a good one, a good person, a good fit for this league? Matt Linehan. I think he'd be. He's a very solid quarterback. I don't think he's uh, NCAA elite or anything. But I think if he's allowed to play in this league for a couple of years, I think he definitely could kind of hone his skill set and perhaps after a few years and like be able to make a roster. I know that's kind of yeah. the story of like Kurt Warner and a couple of these other yeah, guys. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like it's sort of like the U.S. It's sort of like the USFL. What, even though it was like a rival to the NFL, it sort of became a feeding ground for like. Steve Young and uh, and Jim Jim Kelly, even though the whole story about Jim Kelly is that he didn't want he didn't want to be a Buffalo Bill at first. That's why he went to the USFL in the first place. But then when the USFL folded, he said, "You know, he'll give it a go," and then he became one of the renowned legends in Buffalo, New York. But yeah, um, those so those are the only things that we had for the game today. Luis, thanks for playing. No and problem. I thought there was going to be an NBA All Star we'll mention too, but that will be on Sunday. Yeah, we'll we'll cover that yeah. later. But uh, thank you for tuning in, Vandal fans. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Vandal Nation for the latest tweets and updates from Vandal Sports. Uh, this includes press conferences, scores, stats, and injury information. Also follow us on Instagram, the Vandal Nation. Uh, you'll be able to see what we're covering press conference snippets, uh, slow motion videos, just a wide variety of Vandal Athletic uh, events. And, you know, uh, always our website, www.thevandalnation.com, where you can get the latest uh, news as far as Vandal sports, and you can pick up a copy of the Argonaut around the Moscow campus. Uh, Luis, final words? Oh. What, what, what are we? Three mile an hour wind, 50 degree temperature on a cloudy Friday afternoon. I'd say heal up. I mean, we should both heal up from our house, which we're doing pretty good, I would imagine. So let's continue it that way. The sun is was out. Uh, hopefully this weather is able to keep up a little bit, and soon it'll be spring. I'm already counting down the days until spring break. But thank you for tuning in, Vandal fans. We'll be back with you on Sunday at 11 to discuss uh, some of the the men's and women's basketball results, uh, some women's hockey, and all sorts of other athletics, including tennis and, you know, horse polo. I didn't know we had a horse polo team, but apparently we do. So. Yes, we do. Yep, we will provide all that coverage. Uh, thank you very much for listening. We will be back. Uh, this is 4th in Downtown. I'm Josh Grissom. Thank you guys for listening. It's going to be good.